noble father, murderous uncle, and an ancestral relationship. I'm not talking about the Game of Thrones here. I'm talking about The Lion King. All of those themes might seem a bit intense for a Disney classic, but when you're comparing the movie to actual lion behaviour, things get really out there. I'm investigating how this film stacks up to real life on the savannah, answering questions like, is Scar really Simba's dad? And why Simba and Nala's love story is all a little bit too Game of Thronesy. Yes, I am absolutely going to wreck the Lion King for you because I'm finding out whether Hollywood lied to us. I'm Ann Jones and this is What the Duck. For many millennials, the 1994 Disney coming-of-age classic The Lion King formed an integral part of childhood, but its impact goes way beyond an audio-visual babysitting session. While the iconic movie and its equally iconic soundtrack have a special place in many hearts, how does this stack up against lions in real life? There are about 45 um, species of wild cat in the world and lions are by far the most social. They live in sort of family groups. Females uh, live together and prides get taken over by individual males or generally coalitions of males. A coalition of males, so not one leader necessarily, but a small grouping of males which have an agreement. Nice. Together, they will keep other males yeah. away from a group of females. So, being kind to the brilliant, but perhaps not ecologically educated animators of the movie, <laughs> we could say the movie gets this right, Yay! that Mufasa is in a somewhat unhappy coalition with Scar, and the two of them would be the sets of testicles in current rotation for the pride. Unfortunately, though, that might be where the accuracies end in this movie's portrayal of lion society, beginning with Simba being an heir. Simba being the, uh, the heir to the throne is obviously not going to be the case because uh, females remain in their natal group, the group that they were born in, and males disperse. The fact that Simba sort of trade as the, the heir to the throne is completely unrealistic. So, less this. And this will all be mine? Everything. Everything the light touches. And more, one day, everything the light touches will be the territory of some unknown, unrelated male. Oops. Unsurprisingly, in a film that's about a warthog, a lion, and a meerkat being best friends, there are more inaccuracies in this film. The most iconic scene where Simba is held up over the edge of Pride Rock to all the loyal followers is clearly not realistic, but some of those animals there wouldn't even be in Africa. The biodiversity in those scenes is incredible and a couple of clangers in there too, so I think there are anteaters at some point marching along and obviously they are not from Africa, they're from a whole other continent. Hola. Even Rafiki. So Rafiki is uh, sort of sort of described as a baboon, but really he's, um, to all intents and purposes, a mandrel, which is a uh, rainforest um, species of primate. But, you know, we're discussing a movie where all the animals are speaking, and so to point out the kind of um, ecological issues with it seems somewhat funny. <laughs> For the record, I am aware of how ludicrous this video is, but... Back to that iconic lift scene, for the sake of science. Unfortunately, in reality, that show baby sort of scene wouldn't happen. Cubs would remain hidden for months after they're born. Lionesses keep all their cubs together in a collective nursery so that they can share the burden of hunting and babysitting, and they will aggressively defend those cubs against any attackers, who could even be their fathers or uncles. You see, male lions can be incredibly dangerous to cubs. They can undertake infanticide, that is, they will kill cubs. Now, how lionesses seek to protect their future offspring is by confusing the paternity. So how does she do this? Oh, she mates with multiple males within the coalition in a similar time period. Good for her. 
And this strategy reduces the risk of the males killing the cubs because there's a possibility that the cubs are theirs. Who's your daddy? In Lion King terms, this means that if Saravi was doing her job correctly, she would have mated with both Mufasa and Scar. So I'm spelling this out for you here. It's entirely possible that Simba would be Scar's son. Oh my gosh! There's very good reason for um, Uncle Scar to not be aggressive towards Simba. So because he may be his son, and even if he's not his son, he's at least his uncle and would be, you know, passing on his genes indirectly through, through his brother. The Scar slander doesn't stop there either. Not only would he not necessarily be trying to murder his own nephew or son, he'd most likely not be the black sheep of the family. Unlike his brother and his nephew, Scar's mane is a deep, dark brown. And it's that dark mane that would make Scar more popular with the ladies. Oh yeah! In the hot African sun, it's energetically expensive to carry around a really dark, dark mane. So it's an honest signal of fitness to the females. And the reason we know this is some really, really cool experiments that they did in um, East Africa, where they basically brought out these stuffed or those model lions, basically, mm. with different coloured mm -hmm. manes. And they popped them out in the in the prides. And so males were way less likely to go close to and attack a dark maned male. They found them intimidating. And females were way more likely to approach and solicit males with dark, um, dark manes. So Scar's the hot one, and he might also be Simba's dad. God, it is really gonna do Simba in when he finds out both his dads are dead. <laughs> and it's probably going to be pretty rough for you after I ruin this movie's love story forever. Towards the end of the film, Simba returns from his self-imposed banishment to the Pride. He returns to his mother and aunts and his apparent childhood sweetheart, Nala, who becomes the queen next to him. Now, in reality, this is just not the done thing. A male cub would not continue within the same natal pride. He would disperse when he gets to sort of four or five years old and go and mate with unrelated um, females. And, yeah, as it's portrayed in the movie, there's quite a lot of um, uh, potential for incest. The whole Simba-Nala storyline isn't quite so romantic when you find out they're related. They would have been conceived and born in the same tenure of the same pride males as Simba, meaning that she's at least a cousin or even possibly a sibling. And if you didn't know what happened towards the end of the movie, now you do. Incest. I told you I was going to wreck it for you. I'm Dr Ann Jones and please don't send me hate mail. I am just the messenger on behalf of nature, which is way cooler than the movies anyway. Please subscribe to this channel for more animal-related videos. Most of them have far less inbreeding and murder, though. No promises. You can also head to the ABC website to find What the Duck. It's my podcast with heaps of stories about the wilds.